The following interview was conducted with Sarah J. Potts and Gary W. Potts for the Purdue University Oral History Project. It took place on August 4th, 2017 at the Indiana State Fair. The interviewer is Sammy Morris, University Archivist. Welcome, Gary and Sarah. Um, could each of you tell me where you grew up and what years you attended Purdue? Um, I grew up in West Lafayette, Indiana, oh. and I attended Purdue from 1965 to 1968. 65 to 68. And I grew up in Bedford, Indiana, and came up to Purdue in 1965 and graduated in January 1970 with my bachelor's degree. Okay, so what did each of you major in? I majored, I ended up majoring in nursing. Nursing, uh -huh. And I majored in industrial engineering. Okay, was nursing still kind of new at Purdue? Brand new. That's what I thought, it that's was exciting. Brand new, oh. 68 was I think the third graduating class. Wow. It was actually yeah. called the um, Arts, um, Associate Arts Nursing Technology. AANT degree. That wow, she got. that's that's really neat. Um, I guess thinking back to the first time you visited Purdue's campus, since you both grew up in the state, that might have been even before you went to Purdue. Can you remember the first time you saw campus? Well, I, my father was on this on the staff at Purdue, so oh. I remember going to football and basketball games from the time I was five. Wow. And I just grew up at Purdue. What was your dad's name and what did he do? My father was Richard Kindig, K-I-N-D-I-G. He was the athletic ticket manager. Okay. Uh -huh. So you were into sports. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and what were you going to say, Gary, about your first time seeing Purdue? Um, my first time was on the uh, on-campus day. Oh, for a freshman? For freshman, oh. yeah. And... Um, I knew where it was. I wanted to be because I really wanted to be an astronaut. Oh my goodness! Wow. Well, that was the place to be, right? Right. Um, I. This isn't one of our questions, but maybe you want to say a little bit more about why you did select Purdue. Unless you know, I know for some people growing up in the state, it's sort of like you always know. But was there a moment when it occurred to you that you did want to go to Purdue? Or well, I grew up in Bedford with. Uh, a small group of guys that fired model rockets. Oh. And so all four of us decided to go to Purdue and become astronauts if we could. Oh and my one indeed did, Charles Walker. Oh, yes. Who flew on board the, the space shuttle three times yeah. in the 80s. And we got to be at one of those flights with the families. And uh, we just had a nice reunion together three weeks ago, How all amazing. of us. Were you at the Grissom? Yes. Yeah, I was there too. Yeah. I, we there. were at the Galactic yeah. Gathering. In How fact, exciting. I saw you in front of the home, I think. Now you that probably I did, collect. yes. We had children's the activity out there. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe I did it. You did look familiar, but I, I'm, yeah. Yeah, you see a lot that's of people. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's really exciting. Um, okay, tell me a little bit, when you were students, where you lived. Did you live on or off campus? Did what particular dorm? Well, I lived off campus. I lived at home until my senior year, mm -hmm. and then I lived in the Zeta Tau Alpha house. Okay. Uh, was that a, a, a struggle to get your parents to agree to let you, or were yeah, you just kind well, of like, I'm going to do it? <laughs> I, I just took out a student loan and did it. Good for you. So. Good for you. Well, and I lived right across the alley, which is part of our nice story, in the Triangle Fraternity House oh. on University oh. Street. And in the fall of 1967, Triangle and Zeta held a joint alley dance together. And... 48 years later, we're still married and wow. together. So was that That's your first time to meet at, it the, was, at the States? Well, no. We met briefly our freshman year when I was in Tarkington Hall, and Sarah actually came over with another guy into the cafeteria. <laughs> and I met her very briefly then, but mm -hmm. not until 67 uh, and, the rest like I say, history. the rest is history. Wow, that's so neat. Do either of you have like a place in your memory that you like to go study when you were studying on campus or any place you particularly like to hang out? Oh, I used to study in the stacks. In the library stacks? Uh -huh. Oh, nice. Yeah, we used to go back up in there and it was quiet and Let's it was see, a great this, place to 60s, study. Would this have been, was it, the, was it in the humanities library or do you remember? It was in was the... Was there a nursing library there? No, there was no nursing uh -huh. library. Okay. It was at, 
<clears throat> in the regular library. Okay. I'm not okay. sure they still exist, but. Yeah, it, we've had a lot of different changes over the years, but yeah. I bet it was the central one at that time. I studied mostly in the fraternity house, and I also spent a great deal of time, probably excessive amounts of time, in the basement of Stewart Center because uh, in 1968 I was photo editor for the Purdue Debris. Oh, uh-huh. And so um, we even had dates down in the uh, Purdue Debris office from time wow. to time while I had to get pictures ready for the current year's edition. That's awesome. Now, did you work for the Debris also? No. Or you were just meeting no. in there? Okay, very interesting. So the Debris offices were in the basement of the Stewart Center in that time, and then I think they stayed there until the Debris stopped being produced. I oh. think that's correct, yeah. which was uh, not, too long not, ago. not that, long, not that ago. long ago. Yeah. Kind of sad to lose that. Um, well, I was just going to ask if you had student jobs, and I guess working for the debris is more of, is that, is that an employment position mm-hmm. or is that more voluntary? Well, senior staff were actually given a stipend uh-huh. payment, but uh, everyone else in the office, uh, and of course, if you counted it in dollars per hour, it was probably 25 cents for yeah. the time we spent, but yeah. the six or seven of us that were the s- senior most officers of the debris that year did get a small stipend from the, the university. Good. So you really would have had a role in crafting that yearbook for that year. Yes. Yeah, well, that's, that's yes. Nice. The, um, the group did about over 12,000 different images to wow. select the final ones that we wanted to put into the yearbook. That would be fun, I think. I think that would be a fun job. Mm-hmm. Um, how about you, Sarah? Did you do any, any employment while you uh, were Yeah, I worked at the health center as a nurse's aide. Oh, okay. A little bit. And so the health, this, was this the student health center? It was student health center. Okay. I don't, I know it's changed yeah. dramatically, but they did have one floor of inpatient students. Interesting. Then. Well, um, now the rest of the time is sort of things you might want to share with us, what memories you have about your time at Purdue, if you've had other family members who've come, um, how campus has changed, anything really you'd like to have on the record with us. Well, as I started to tell you, my grandmother graduated from Purdue in 1919. Yes. In home economics. Do you mind giving us her name? It was Gertrude Kindig, K-I-N-D-I-G. Actually, her maiden name was Gertrude Deanhart. Deanhart, okay. And uh, she graduated in 1919, and then my father graduated in 1950. He was the class of 1950. Richard Kindig. Richard Kindig. Okay. And uh, and then I graduated uh, in 1968, and our three sons graduated in the late 90s to 2000. Wow, a whole family legacy. Yeah. We gave them a choice of any school that they wanted to go to as long as it was located in West <laughs> Indiana. That seems fair to me. I, yeah. I think that that actually, was extremely fair. Actually, they didn't, um, they really didn't consider a lot of other places. Our really? oldest son is an engineer, and he wanted to be an engineer and oh, well that's the place yeah for it. and our youngest is in t- in computer technology oh. kind of computer engineering yes kind of thing so Purdue was the perfect place for them we're a whole STEM family yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that is I the perfect I guess place. one of my best memories apart from all the many things that Sarah and I did together was in the fall of 1969 right. Neil Armstrong came back to campus to receive his honorary doctorate degree. Actually, it was January, the official records, I think January 7th or something. Uh Um, And I was still photographing for the Exponent Debris. So I went over and took my spot. And I have a a photograph that uh, hopefully will make a Purdue alumnus article coming out this fall of uh, President Fred Hovday Uh opening up the small flag that Neil Armstrong carried in his breast pocket uh, on on the surface of the moon. So, wow. uh, I then had in nineteen I can't remember what ninety nine I think it was. Yeah. I had a chance to give Neil Armstrong a copy of that oh, when he goodness. was back for a football weekend. Uh-huh. And I'll never forget. He looked at it. He seemed surprised. He thanked me for it. And he said, I've never seen this photograph wow. before. A couple weeks later, I got a wonderful thank you letter saying he'd included it into his album of all the very many pictures that he had from NASA and, of course, his, his 
historic voyage and uh, Purdue University. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. What an experience as a student to see a student interested in being an astronaut, to have that experience of photographing someone who's just stepped on the moon. Okay. Right? Exactly. It was priceless. Did, did he interact with the students when he I know that I know that I've seen <laughs> photographs from the past of President Hubby, you know, accepting things from him and so forth, but did did he interact with the students outside of the kind of ceremonial aspect or that day I honestly don't know but I know that all of his trips back to campus after that he heavily interacted he even really gave loved discussions University. he loved Purdue yeah he There's loved no Purdue doubt. and of course Armstrong Hall now stands proudly with a beautiful statue in front of it and housing all the engineering administration so mm -hmm. yes yeah. It's, it sounds like you both were there at exciting times, the beginnings we of nursing, yep. you know, seeing the, our, our most famous, well-recognized astronaut and in person. Um, those are incredible memories. Are there any things you can think of that, you know, might not ever make it into the history books about Purdue, but there are things that you thought were interesting for someone now to know that, you know, happened when you were there? Tell them about gold diggers. I don't know if that'll make it into the history book of Purdue. Oh, what? In the Red Baron. Oh, do you, that's it. That's actually his. Yeah. He was. They, they used had to a have comp, They had a a week long kind of like Sadie Hawkins week called the Gold Diggers Ball. Oh, week. And Gold Diggers Week. Yeah. It was you know girls ask the guys kind of thing. Oh wow. And the whole idea was they were going to name one person king for the thing uh -huh. and. The wilder the acts, or the more creative the acts, I should say, the better it would be. So, mm -hmm. being in a, a fraternity of engineers, my fraternity brothers built a biplane like the German Fokker that the Red Baron flew. Yeah. Snoopy and the Red Baron had just come out as a <laughs> song by the Royal Guardsmen. Really? So, they built this scale model for me to wear um, a suit. It was actually a pair of red flannel and an old leather hat like a World War I pilot. We traveled all over campus, appearing at sorority houses and women's dormitories, walked in, set up a portable AV equipment and uh, speakers, and played the song for all the people. And then we had the dance that Saturday night, and I, I won the award as Gold Diggers. Well, they hung, wow. him, they hung him off the side of the building. They the, hung you? Off at, the fraternity house at building. At lunchtime, the brothers hooked me onto a hoist and pulled me up over the side of the Triangle Fraternity House. Ooh, gracious. See, I lasted, don't think the university allowed that to happen. the song <laughs> out over campus until we got a call from the dean of students oh, that dear. we were breaking the noise regulations after class had started. Wow. So that was the end of our <laughs> between class playing of Snoopy and the Red Bear. I'm glad that you survived that safely. <laughs> it scares me a little thinking about it. Oh, those are great memories. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Is there anything thank else you. you'd like to be on the record? Um, I don't. We used to, no. Do they still do you sing? You sing? I'm not no, sure. No, I, probably it doesn't not. sound familiar to me. Is that like a program? Yes. Do they still do it? Do they? They still do you sing. Once yeah. a year, it's fraternities like and sororities and how oh, it's a it's PMO a Greek, event. A Greek thing? Okay. It's, a, it's yeah. usually on um, Spring Fest weekends. We had it on Mother's Day weekend, Mother's so we always Day, yeah. brought our mothers up and oh, they could yeah. sleep and the, in the dorms. And the, one, and the last year we were both students. My sorority wanted and his fraternity wanted. Oh, how So fun. we were... It's, you were just meant to be there at the same yeah. time, and such exciting things happening. Yeah. Now, was the university starting to plan it all for its hundredth anniversary that year in '69, uh, or did that would that when was the hundredth? 1969 was the hundredth. But it's probably 69. not celebrated till we may not have been celebrated till the till fall. that fall. The official well, university's in May. You would have still been there. I have no still recollection been a student. of that. We were really not as exciting about it as the alarm. No, I mean, it what wasn't. With that, yes, right? that but was no. a time. That was a time when there was there were protests yeah, and there was a lot going on on campus. Um, the campus had a huge protest out on the out on the mall mm -hmm. uh, in front of University Hall about the prices in the cafeteria. Really, prices of food. Yes, mm -hmm. and oh. they actually set up tents and they did campfires and. 
still part of that era, you know, of the '60s. Yeah. So where did they where did they have these tents? And right on the there? grass. Wow! Outside right of the, the administration building. <laughs> and everyone, the Purdue police seemed to allow it for a while, and then it was peaceful. It was never uh-huh. a it was never a difficult mm-hmm. demonstration, and then they they ended it. That sounds quaint and lovely today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's unlike some of the things that go on today. Exactly. But, uh, I'm glad to hear it. But was that was kind of the start of Yeah, you yeah, were there at protests. the very beginning, weren't you? Well, yeah. thank you both so much. It's, thank you it's for an asking. honor to interview you. So.